just hit record. Okay, Ninja Warrior, Dragon's Den, Fort Boyard, Total Wipeout. Okay, so what have these four shows got in common? Well, you're looking at someone that has completed, uh, that's taken part in all of them, and we're not talking about me. Jackie, Jackie McQuiston. <laughs> Oh, how are you? Hi, John. <laughs> oh. right. I'm fine, thanks. And yourself? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got to say, that's pretty impressive to get on that many uh, TV shows. I mean, I actually worked out, you've done the, uh, technically, you've done the Grand Slam because you've been on BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, Four, Channel Four, and Channel Five. <laughs> that's, and in a talking <laughs> role, we're not even talking photobombing. You actually were in, like a, <laughs> in a speaking role, as it were. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I never really thought of it, actually, John. Yeah. Um, so thank you for pointing it out, because I didn't even know. <laughs> the, the thing is, though, is that whereas, uh, apart from you doing all of these uh, all of these things on TV, there's a lot more to you to that. And that's part of the reason for this uh, this interview. Obviously, you won the, Brit the title of Britain's Fittest Woman back in 2004, which we're going to discuss in a moment. Basically, to set the scene, the reason why we're doing this uh, last year, with all the lockdowns and everything on YouTube, there was a real surge in popularity for Total Wipeout and the viewing figures. I mean, some of the episodes are up to like 40 million views now. And there are literally hundreds and hundreds of comments of people asking questions about the show. So that's where the idea for this came from. And I thought, well, you, you've taken part in it. So why not get a bit of feedback off you? And at the same time, you're probably going to help answer a few questions that people have been wondering for years because... Obviously, with shows like Wipeout, it predates the social media age. Oh, yeah. You know, it's right. whereas we're used to shows having behind the scenes stuff like X Factor, Extra Factor, that sort of thing. Well, Wipeout was and Fort Boyard, they're all before all of that stuff. So there isn't much oh, yeah. extra info out there. So that's, right. that's the main reason to this. Now, we're going to go to Wipeout in a few minutes and answer some questions on that. The thing I want to ask you about now is your sporting backgrounds, because... Uh, you've done you've done quite a bit now I understand did you used to be a gymnast uh, did did, you, yeah. okay now was this competitive or just for fun or no it was competitive John um right. obviously a long time ago but yeah. no lots of funding right so, um but yeah I did get to go to Germany to compete and, oh wow okay yeah um, yeah I, it was um yeah quite serious part of my life and yeah. um it was very difficult giving it up yeah. Um, and of course, nowadays, gymnasts can go on to their mid 20s. Yeah. But by the time you got to about 17 or 18, yeah. you know, you, were, you hadn't made it to the Olympics or, but we weren't really that good back then because right. there wasn't, you know, the funding. So, yeah. Of course, I suppose yeah. lottery funding was more that sort of to cut, start to come in, in the 90s, wasn't it? Or the mid to late Yeah, 90s, that's, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it was, yeah. It was my love. I yeah. just spent many hours, that's right, training. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, uh, what I'm <laughs> curious about is that from the gymnastics, was that when you started to discover the cross-training scene, you know, back in the 90s, the ultra-fit competitions, that sort of, that sort um, of stuff? No, not really, actually. It was quite a few years later because I stopped um, gymnastics around the age of 17, 18. Nice. Yeah. And then I still, I worked in the fitness industry as well yeah. as having like a normal job as well. Yeah. And um, I was teaching classes because it was just like aerobics and things like that. Yeah. And then I had my two sons, but I still, um, you know, worked doing aerobic classes and things yeah. like that. And then I entered a few little um, challenges when right. I lived in Devon. And one of them, um, was down at the Marine Camp, right. the Royal Marines place. Yeah. And I got invited because I I'd won this assault thing and they right. invited me to train with them. Right. Um, with the PTIs. And I then um, trained with a chap who did the um, cross training competitions. Right. And um, he, yeah, he got me involved then in, in doing that and the ultra pit. I got you. Of course, I, I suppose really um, to set the scene for the UltraFit thing, because obviously it's a magazine that doesn't exist anymore. These competitions, would you say that it was kind of a precursor to CrossFit? Because effectively Definitely. CrossFit is multi-event competitions. And I understand the yeah. CrossFit Games started in 2007. 
Yeah. Uh, if I've got my, I've got friends that are CrossFitters. If I've got my dates wrong, they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna give me a telling off later. <laughs> um, am I right yeah. that UltraFit started in the mid nineties, wasn't it? Early to mid nineties sort of region. Yes, I think it was around ninety five, John. Right. Um, and it originated in Australia. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I did do a bit of work with the UltraFit magazine, so I sort of knew how it all worked. Yeah. And. Um, it was a great national event. You had to qualify yeah. and you had quite a few hundred people doing yeah. it, um, multi-disciplines. And it was great because we, yeah. Well, actually, so, yeah, I've, I've got a copy. For those who don't know, this is the magazine that used to be in circulation regularly. And because uh, it used to be classified as finding Britain's fittest man and woman, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. That's it, wasn't it? <laughs> Am I right? It was 10 events back to back all against the clock. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Because yeah. we've actually, uh, this is where I hope technology is going to work. I've <laughs> got some pictures. Uh, let's go to this now. So this will come up in a moment, I hope. Okay, screen sharing. Okay, yeah. this works. Can you see that now? So now we've got an image of. This was, I'm not sure what year this was, but effectively this was like the lap pull down exercise, wasn't it? It might've been about 95, 96. Right, yeah. yeah. Very old fashioned behind the neck. <laughs> yeah. I suppose that's not a thing nowadays, all in front of the neck. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so obviously with these competitions, it was all very, very competitive because the first one I went to was in 98. And it was just the speed that everyone's flying through it, which I suppose is what we see with the CrossFit Games now, isn't it? It's a very yeah. much, everything's all sort of rapid fire. I mean, out of interest with sort of training, do you have to find, do you have to keep yourself just on the right side of tipping into lactic, but just trying to find that balancing point where you can keep going without... Oh, yeah, that's right, up? John, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's... Um... Yeah, the, the hard the hard bit was uh, the, the treadmill at the end and the, the bench press, the last two disciplines. And, oh, that's um, right, because the treadmill was like, was it on like a grade six or a grade 10, 10 incline, 10%. wasn't it? What, what was so it? 10, 10 percent incline, and it was what, 800 meters? Yeah. Yeah. It was really hard, yeah. The old, power that, yeah. <laughs> the old power jogger. Yeah. The old power jogger. I remember those things, yes. <laughs> And also, you had another lane. You had it was two lanes racing each other. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It was but two lanes racing four. each other. And then wasn't the um about two or three minutes after you start, the person behind you starts, and if they catch you up, you're well, you're, out. you're out of the way because <laughs> they got a schedule yeah. to keep to. <laughs> Ain't no person <laughs> slowing them down. I know. Oh yeah. Oh god. It was. But there were faults with it, John, because of the judging. You see, yeah. and it was like, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I do remember some of that because I think some of the reps being counted, there was a bit of a question mark. Was that a real rep or no. someone goes through 50 reps and like, well, did they even do one? <laughs> I know. I know. It was all that. Yeah. yeah. But um, <laughs> of course, then what happened was that for, I remember UltraFit up until I think it was 2001 up in Stratford-on-Avon. And then obviously then you had this other competition came by, which and again, we're going to go to a clip now. That Trans World Sport featured. Um, this is the one because in 2003 Steve Redgrave hosted it, and then the clip we've got is Rebecca Romero, who was, I believe, she won silver at the Olympics in rowing that year, and then she went on to win gold in cycling at the Beijing Olympics. Yeah. So I believe, oh, well, that was the group photo with you. This is the one in question. Ready in the there. south of England. A gym-based so, endurance test. Does this bring back any memories? Oh, yeah, it does yeah. definitely. Yes, yeah. It's great days. Is the brainchild of women <laughs> cross-training for oh, four years? So whereabouts was this that's one? That's exactly what this Olympic one silver medalist Rebecca Rowe was going to win. Ready. Ready. Yeah. Yeah. invited hmm. to hand out the prizes, the British rower decided but to we'll take probably have to, we'll probably have to mute uh, it in a moment just so that we can talk over it. I'm trained in one particular area and that's rowing really so although I'm of the mindset I should be able to do anything to a high level in fact that's not not the case but I'll see what lead I can get from the rowing and uh, hopefully use that to my advantage however as predicted cross training is not to be undertaken lightly favorite for the ladies title is Jackie McQuiston she's been doing this at the top level for 10 years I think it's going to be hard for her when you really do have to put in so much specific training for this. And I know that with rowing, uh, it's different form of training. So 
I mean, you just don't know. As expected, Rebecca does well on the rowing machine, posting the fastest time amongst the women and finishing just six seconds behind the... Right, so I'll mute that a second. So can you just give me a bit of feedback of what this what this day was like? Was it a one-day competition or a two-day one? No, it was a one-day event, John, right. and um, it wasn't um, a big venue. Right. But a lot of people there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was um, obviously a lot of attention because Rebecca was there. Yeah. And, um, oh, it's, I suppose I was pretty confident because, yeah. uh, you know, it, it is a very much a strength, you know, yeah. um, course that one. And the, the rowing wasn't long enough for her yeah. to make that much of a... To, to make yeah. much of an impact on the yeah, other events. Yeah, so I was I was actually quite confident. You know, I was, I'm nervous and I'm really worried, but I didn't actually think I'd have too much of a problem. Right, oh, that's good. Because yeah. what I've noticed is that some of these events, even if someone's got an advantage on one event, if they uh, if they push themselves too hard on that, they're going to pay for yeah. it on the next few events and they can lose yeah. absolutely loads. Yeah, um, experience as well. As you know, that's yeah. right. The pacing of it all and the experience. Yeah. Because I suppose really, so, if you go all out on one event, that's it. You're absolutely spent. Because when you people who do single event sports, they can go all out on one event and then they're on the floor for twenty minutes. That's, right. <laughs> that's not useful in a multi-event discipline. No. Like that, is it? No. And also with, with her being taller as yeah. well, the, some of those events is quite hard for her. She's got uh, right, yeah. yeah. And because I've got the shorter arms, it's right. much easier. I see so you have the range of yeah. motion is not as yeah. uh, not as so, much for you. Like, of course, it's very, very um, stressful, you know. It was a yeah. small venue, lots of people, and yeah. cameras on you, TV people there. Yeah. Uh, so I she's used to that, yeah. yeah. So actually, we'll just play the rest of the clip, because there's a little, there's a couple of words from you at the end of it as well, and then we'll carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise there was only. A, I didn't realise. I stopped there was a bit it. of pressure on. Anyway, I, I've got to ask you: Was the bench press the final event on that one? Yes. yes. So it was treadmill yes. and eight hundred treadmill, and then bench press to finish. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is that's that's quite a tough one to uh, to say the least. <laughs> but it's it's kind of interesting though that. Um, that effectively you were part of the blueprint for what well, I, th I think you were at least the whole cross training scene because that seemed to sort of sort of quieten down a little bit in the mid to late 2000s didn't it and then CrossFit started to emerge didn't it so I remember when CrossFit first came out I just thought this looks familiar and I suppose they've obviously moved it I mean god they're doing like handstand walks down whatever and yeah, yeah. Like, oh they do all sorts now it's, it's impressive to watch that's um, right so obviously uh sorry this is this is the thing when you're doing things live it's amazing how your mind could just go completely blank for a second I know. so yeah. obviously we basically we've highlighted your sport inside of things but obviously the thing that some people are curious about is with uh wipeouts and uh, uh first of all i gotta say this this photo um was this filmed before you ran the qualifier or was it after you'd done filming or what's I'm trying to think now would this have been because it was a two it was a two-day filming wasn't it you generally the first just so people know is that first of all you're on a 16-hour flight from london to argentina oh god it's exhausting john isn't I it know. <laughs> yes. it's, it's unbelievably tiring yeah, yeah to have to do i know this is the other thing even though you're only active for a few minutes on the course what a lot of people don't realize you've got a 16 hour flight that's overnight getting yeah. to argentina you then, you're arriving, so let's say we flew out today to go out there, we arrive there at lunchtime tomorrow, you check into the hotel, and then at about seven o'clock the next morning, you're on a coach, doing That's about it. a one hour coach drive down to the set, and I then know. you're on set for two days. It's such, right. a rapid, I know, it's such a rapid, uh, such a rapid turnaround. Yes, it's really, I think that was between the two days. Oh, it could well have been, yeah. Well, the, the reason I ask, you're quite lucky because we never got this option, series one and two, we were not allowed to have any photos of us on the course at all because they were they were so afraid of yeah. getting out to the media that sort of That's stuff. Right. So a few of yeah. us took a few I, sneaky photos. I think they had the Facebook then. You see, that was yeah. it. It just started with Facebook. That's it. it was just started. Yeah. That just started. Yeah. That's right. Was it, was it late two thousand nine that you were out there? I think. 
I'll tell you what, okay, was it in the autumn that you went there? I think it, yes, yes, it was. Right. Yeah. That would have been 2009 because I know your series, series three, started in about January of 2010, you know, and ran for a few months. So that would have been, but of course, when you think Facebook was like very early days, you know, back then, yes, it was. I mean, That's YouTube right. had only been out a couple of years at that point. Yeah, there was so, no adverts on Facebook. It was basically just yeah. basic Facebook, wasn't it? Yeah. That's right. Oh, so lovely panda. <laughs> I know. I was going to say, I have to ask you, what was your impression when you first met her? Very, very nice lady. She's great. She's great yeah. Oh, my goodness. So genuine. Mm. Really. And lovely accent. Yeah, <laughs> she was so fun. nice. She's got, she's got a really good memory as well. I mean, she literally... She's having to remember 20 people's names for every single show. And she doesn't have any problems whatsoever. She's, she's wrong. No, you with that. <laughs> Did you also find the put down? She's very, very quick on the quick fire responses, isn't she? She's got to be yeah, really, yeah. she's got to be sharp. Sort of yeah, I liked her a lot. She was lovely. So uh, now I have to ask you, because obviously your nickname on the show was Press Up Jacks. Now, yeah. in the clip we're about to show, did you really do 100 press ups in front of Amanda before the... Before yeah. the oh my goodness, John, right? I didn't know I was going to have to do that. <laughs> right. And the thing was, I could not move for days afterwards. I'm not surprised. Was... The lactic yeah. in your arms would have been huge. Yeah. yeah. So, of course, when I had to have the, you know, buoyancy aid. Okay, yeah, like, the, the flotation yeah, thing, yeah. I could hardly move with that. Yeah. That was a bit too big on me. And in my arms and chest and back, I yeah. never thought... I had to do a hundred in a in a one I call it in a one Yeah, and yeah, in I one go. Yeah. Did. So yeah, you, you literally yeah. did. You did the hundred press ups in one hit. No, no. Yeah, stopping. I promise you, I did. Yes, I know. Because my I, arms I, are quite wide apart. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. I mean, I've tried that myself. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't do it in one hit. I needed to have to break it up a little bit. So. Yeah, no, they made me do it. So oh, I was new. suffering. I'll really tell you suffering. what. Let's let's go to it now. A second. Three. Four, five, six. That is impressive. I had no Ten, idea 11, Amanda 12, could count 13. that high. Meet Jax, a 45-year-old personal trainer from Chippenham. Let's see if Jax... Nice, nice ticket to the gun show there. <laughs> oh, yes, she can. That's right, I was impressed with this, with the balls, keeping your balance on this. Well, I, I must tell you, I tell you what happened with that, John. Yeah, once this clip ends, we'll, we'll, go, straight, we'll go straight to it. 72, 73, 74. He's still going on those. Amanda there, now on really big numbers. A time of three minutes 37 after a hundred. That's it. Yeah, go on. What's what's the story about when you were on the uh, when you're on the balls? Well, yeah, so the, the balls, John, I could have probably done gone further on the balls. Right. But I kept thinking, I'm against the clock here. Yeah. And you have to be really and you know, I thought I actually probably best fall in because. It sounds silly, but I just still thought I'd be quicker actually getting in the water. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made it in time. But you know, because yeah, that has happened. Because uh, I think it was in series two. There was one guy. He was so he spent so long clearing the yeah. course. But he ends up taking like six minutes to complete the course, and you're not going to make the next round. If no, that's the thing. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you take your time, you probably can do it. Yeah. Um, and I thought, well, do you know what? This is foolish because I'm not going to make it. I'm just going to because it's really. Even because I'm so small, do you remember those spongy things that you had to step up on, the blue, that were all green Oh, the, the, the pontoon sort of things. Those. Yeah, yeah. yeah, everything was hard work for me to get my little legs up. Yeah. And everything was taking me longer with because of the short levers I have. And also and, as well, did you find, because of the, the life jacket that you have on, people don't oh, realise how you're quite restricted in movement yeah. and getting around the I know, and especially being sore after the 100 press-ups. Yeah, of course, so yeah. Was like I gotta do this fast. Yeah. yeah. So I sort of, you know, well, quickly the, fell in. There is another thing that people probably don't think about because I could see that you don't. Um, you you had quite a bit of mud on you anyway, and which makes it a lot more slippery. And the thing is, if you take a dip in the water, it rinses all the mud yeah, off, which makes it easier for the next yeah. obstacle. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to. You have to think through. about that's yeah. right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, that's the one thing people don't realize that there's a. Your mind is racing on a hundred different things at once. Oh yeah, that's I, right. Remembering got, it all. I've got to ask you: when you're on the the qualifier, did it feel slower than what that when they read out your your time at the end of the day? Did it feel like you were longer on the course than what you actually were? 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. it did drag. It did actually. I've yes, that's right. The reason I asked, I've spoken to a few other people that have done it, and we we all said the same thing that it felt like we were on the course for ages, and then you get your time through. Like, oh, it wasn't too bad afterward. You know, that seems to be the general uh, the general yeah. mindset. And of course, the other thing as well, like you said, you do the sixteen hour flights. You know. You check into your hotel, then you spend an entire set on day, and the qualifier literally takes an entire day to film. So, I mean, can you remember if it was morning or afternoon that you uh, that you ran at all? Or, um, I don't know, John, but we definitely had to be there quite early. Everything, yeah, it's, uh, about, eight, yeah. it's about eight o'clock that you arrive on set. That's then you've right. got to do yeah. the interviews with Amanda, all of that first, obviously, hundred press ups yeah. in your case. Yeah. Um, all I remember was that they would do about 10 people before lunchtime, you know, have lunch break, then they'll do another 10 in the afternoon. And then about four or five o'clock, then you've got, as you can see on screen there, Andy Norgate, the producer, would then start reading out the roll call of everyone that had made it to, um, you know, to Crash Mountain. Yeah. So was that a nervy time at all? Because I suppose you don't really know through the day whether or not you've, you've made it, do you? It, it was actually, John, because I knew that I was slow. Right. I did know I was slow. So, right. yeah, I, I, and I, I realised it was difficult for me being so small to get through some of the things, you know. Right. So I'll I was you, surprised I got through. OK, so I'm curious about as well. Were you allowed to watch anyone else do the qualifier or no? No, no, no. So, same with us. So, yeah. uh, so let me get it right. You've got the tents by the side of the course and all yeah. 20 of you are in there. As each person starts doing it one by one, they're only allowed to then speak to the people who've also ran the qualifier, and then you can talk amongst yourselves, can't you? After you've you've run it, yeah. but you can't then talk to anyone who hasn't run yet, can you? That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. I know. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Did you find that were you all comparing notes amongst each other about which obstacles you fell off and how far you got on the balls, that sort of stuff, and then you're trying to work out, or oh, how fast was I? Any anything like that? Well, John, do you know with me, I'm funny. When it comes to anything like that, I sort of keep myself to myself a bit. Right. I'm so yeah. nervous. I yeah. sort of, yeah, I didn't, I don't know if I did really. I do remember one of the guys, he found a hole in the tent and right. he was looking through to try and see. And I was going, let me have a look, let me have a look. Of course, I said, what I couldn't see. But, you know what, um, I, kept getting in, I kept getting in trouble for different things because I was trying to, well, they, they had another set on course, so usually another country was filming. And I was just yeah. watching the sweeper in action. I got told off by production for that. Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. So. I know, I know. That's right, yeah. yeah. And also a lot of them were quite a bit younger than me. Yeah. You know? Which I suppose yeah. really, I mean, that's what, from memory, they wanted to try and have quite a wide mix of, of people in quite a few different age categories as well, didn't they? Because was it you and, and Derek were the oldest two in your yeah, age? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, which I suppose that leads into another question because, like, Derek won your episode and he was, what, 56 or 57? Yeah, that's so right. It, it kind of, you know, when you hear people trying to say that, oh, I'm a bit too old to do that sort of thing or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit past it these days, it's only an excuse if you make it one. It's yeah. it's amazing what the body's still capable of, isn't it? That's right, I know. Yeah. Oh, he was great, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, actually, this, I believe, was the reaction when your name had been read out. Because was it 12th place you qualified in, didn't it? You just snuck through the... Just That's it, yeah. When it's me teeth, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, the thing yeah. is with you, you were then the first series, because, obviously, there was Sweeper for Series 1 and 2, and then you were the star. So you probably went out there expecting Sweeper and then found out it was like a brand new... Uh, oh, I was really happy it wasn't Sweeper. I was so pleased about that. Oh, really? Of course, yeah. yeah, because if the, the higher the bar goes, it does, let's face yeah. it, it does discriminate against shorter people, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. so I was really pleased about that, John. <laughs> Well, I suppose, yeah, I know in, in my series, I remember a couple of the girls were saying, you know, if they're only about five, five foot, five foot two, the bar up at like waist height for some of the guys could be almost chest height for some of the girls, which is a bit un it's a bit unfair, really. So I know. Bit... I, yeah, that's right. I got lucky on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously this was the new uh, this is the new look game. Now I'm I'm curious on something because I've never actually asked you this. How did you because you're allowed to fall in repeatedly and climb and you got the ladders there to climb back up? Did um, how did you get on the podium in the first place? Did they say just jump in the water and, and climb up, or did they like get a cherry picker out and hoist you up there one by one? 
Oh, John, oh. God, yeah. God, it's oh. hard to remember. Uh, I think we had to get in the water, I think. Okay. I don't know, actually, John. Yeah. I know one thing. No, I'm sorry, I'm on the spot this, because this was quite a few years. This is, like, what, 12 years? It is a long time ago. It's hard to remember, but I tell you what I do remember about this. Yeah. I had everybody in stitches because Amanda um, wanted everyone to say something. Right. When they were up there, about what their um, name would be, you know. Right. And it was quite high up. Right. And, um, oh, I probably shouldn't swear, but I won't swear. I'll just say, <laughs> uh, 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 she went around with everybody and she was mm. saying, right. And, and she asked me, and yeah. I'm a bit flying heights. I really <laughs> I am. Yeah. And she said, so, Jack, what would you, Jackie, what would you name? And I said, I'm called, I am myself jacks right <laughs> so basically you're proving yourself yeah yeah but they didn't actually give me the name press up jacks right i had to come up with what i was going to be called and i said right. i'm myself jacks yeah. Well, yeah. everybody was laughing so much <laughs> because right. he said but jacks is the bbc you can't say that yeah. and everyone just fell in laughter and <laughs> people were falling in the water oh my goodness <laughs> right so funny i had them in stitches but Brilliant. the water, the water, you didn't mind falling in the water because it was so nice and refreshing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that I can't remember. I think we might have had to swim out onto it. Right. I can't remember, John, actually. Yeah, because this is this is what I wanted, because obviously for sweeper, we had to start the game dry because with that one, if you go in the water, you're out of the game. So they got a cherry picker out and they would hoist everyone up one by one. It took like 20 or 30 minutes to get all 12 people on. But I did wonder, it's a different scenario for you because you're allowed to fall in the water and climb back. So in theory, starting the game, you know, just jumping into the water and getting into position. I can't remember. Yeah. Because we were so tired, you know, yeah. like you say, the long journey over there. And I just can't remember, John. When you think this was the start of day two for you, because the first day was just the qualifier. And then by the time you get back to the hotel, it's probably about seven o'clock in the evening seven eight mm. o'clock then you've got an early morning start back up at like 6 a.m on the coach at seven and you would have been doing this event if it was anything like series two you would have been doing this at about 10 o'clock in the morning thereabouts you know yeah. so it was a long uh, people don't realize how rapid fire it was very it tiring it yeah. was really really tiring that's right yeah. yeah but um yeah it was fun i had them all laughing <laughs> yeah i'll tell you what is that uh, i know that um uh, I know that in series two and a couple of my episodes uh, is that when people fall off things, it's like an involuntary thing. You end up saying a couple of four letter words because that's <laughs> when I realized the bleep machine was going to be working. Yes. Overdrive. <laughs> tell you, what, though, you know what they say about BBC and, you know, it's a family show every now and then a couple of people, because obviously all the, um, all the helmets are all microphoned up. Yeah. And occasionally uh, a couple of words have slipped through, uh, slipped through the radar and they didn't realize I think it was the champion show series two. Uh, I think it was Rachel got whacked off the thing really hard. And one of the other person, one of the other guys, I think it was Chris said something and it got completely missed by the sensors. And they put that out at primetime TV. I was like, I didn't notice it. It was one of the guys on YouTube, you know, all these fans of the show, they picked up on it. I, I never yeah. spotted it. So oh. it's, it's quite entertaining all these, uh, all these sort of things. Yeah. So oh. obviously, uh, so what we'll do, I have got one little clip of the uh, of the stuff in action i'll keep it muted because it's easy to talk <laughs> to talk over it now out of interest did it take a few attempts for you doing all of this oh you... yes yeah. oh we did john that's right yeah. yeah because this is the other thing in the editing i i've watched your episode back and it only shows one attempt for you and on that one attempt you go straight across but given how much everyone was falling off i was just curious if there was a bit more uh you know a bit more to it yeah, I, I think I about three times, I think, yeah. I had to go. But it's again, it's very tiring, and you have to be quick. And uh, getting up. Is... I was thinking that. You fall in the water, then you've got to climb back up a ladder. Yeah. Then you've got to wait for the platforms to align and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot going on all at once. Well, you it? have to be reasonably fit and yeah. strong because it was tiring. There's oh, no yeah. doubt about that. Yeah, people were yeah. getting tired out. Yeah, absolutely. And completely soaked afterward as well, as, as this picture shows. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, am I right? Well, this was the five of you that qualified, wasn't it? Yes, yes. So then it was, so Dizzy Dummies was up next. Now, am I right? Is it the same for you that Dizzy Dummies was filmed very, very quickly after you'd done Crash Mountain? Did they go into it fairly rapidly? Yeah, they did, John. Yeah, yeah that's right, yeah. Yeah, because all I remember 
all I remember from series two is that they wanted to get dizzy dummies done before lunchtime, which kind of makes sense because if you're getting spun around heavily, you don't want to have lunch in you. No, and then that's right. Yeah, yeah. I think I don't think elastic I was... buckets uh, by the ready. Yeah, and I think also, you know, you don't feel like eating, you know, yeah. because you're actually too nervous and yeah. uh, the adrenaline's going and it's amazing how I didn't really feel like eating anyhow. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 I can, I can understand that. Of course, mm. so then the next up, now this, I believe, was just, bef- was this just before you were about to start Dizzy Dummies? Oh, Cause so. that's, yeah, because that looks like all the kit needed for, for that. I'm getting but, nervous. I didn't <laughs> think about it. Do you know what? I, I remember trying to, of course, I suppose, did you find your gymnastics background, did that help you cope with the dizziness on Dizzy Dummies? Because oh. you do quite, no, <laughs> I really <laughs> because <laughs> you know it was something i was always nervous about i remember one night in the gym i tried spinning around on the spot for about 20 30 seconds and then try and run in a straight line and i just like fell sideways i was dizzy for the rest of the evening i felt awful so i, d- I feel sorry for anyone that had to play this game it yeah. just looked it just looked absolutely oh. brutal oh it was tough yeah, yeah. so uh yeah we can you remember much of the two rounds that you did on this at all um because we've got one clip coming up i think it was noel accidentally plowed straight in you were just about to complete it and then you had noel kind of came steaming in didn't see you and then uh plowed into it yeah i know i know john do you know with this Hmm. it was very difficult to get past the men yeah um because obviously it wouldn't be in bigger and and you know there's no like ladies first or anything so I did find I knew I wasn't gonna get into the top three. Right. But my goal was to get the furthest out of the ladies. I see what you mean, yeah. yeah which, so obviously, was, which obviously you did because this was the final um hold on, yes. let's put the sound on a second. Maybe. Uh, oops, oh, no, no, I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> Technology's failing me. Let's let's go back to the interview. Let's listen to what's said. So it's all between. Take that Alfie and press up jacks. You were last out of the gate. That's pretty much all that went wrong. I don't know. I think maybe I let the guys go ahead and I wasn't enough. I, I should have been a bit more tomboyish. <laughs> Big nasty boys. You said you didn't have a hoe. <laughs> oh, they were really nice guys. They, they really were. It's, it wasn't their fault. It's just how it is, isn't it? You know? I noticed even when Noel, I think it was Noel, when he ploughed into you, he apologised straight away because clearly it wasn't an intentional thing. It's just... Oh, no, and you're, no. I, I suppose a big it. inflatable thing. He probably couldn't see that you were at the far end no, anyway. Couldn't. That's no. it. I know. I was taking too long, John. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it was me, uh, had it been me, though, I would have taken more than a long time. I would have just been over on the side being sick. I like, I don't like being spun around. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it made Noel out to be the, the baddie, but actually, you're right, he, he didn't know, and yeah. um, I was taking forever over it, you know, it was just one of them things. Yeah, but it was, I mean, overall, I mean, how would you rate the experience of going out there? I mean, was it... Uh, do you know, they, it was it was brilliant. Yeah. I have to say, I enjoyed it. I was very scary, yeah. and yeah. Um, but I enjoyed it so much with the people. They are yeah. the nicest crowd, and yeah. Um, yeah. In, they did ask me actually to go back out again um, oh, when right. I got home. I literally yeah. hadn't even unpacked the suitcase, but right. they wanted to go back out again, John. But I was too tired. Oh, so that and, was the because uh, your series was the start of doing a legend show, wasn't it? Where they were like picking that, yeah. contestants to yeah. to go back yeah. out. And I just couldn't do it, John. I was just too tired and work commitments and everything. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I was exhausted from the whole thing. Because like now, you say, it's a long way to go. Do you know no? what? I know what you mean, because I know with me, when I did my first episode, I wasn't even too sure if there was going to be a, well, it was, it was the, the champion show. I was flown back for five days and then back to Heathrow to go back out there. I was absolutely ruined on that. So you would have been in a similar thing if you'd done the, yeah, done the Legends right. show. Yeah. Um, I've got the jet lag. By the time the two shows were done, I think it took me a few months before my body clock came back on the UK time. Yeah, that's like, it. Oh. And you're bashed around and everything. Everything is all sore. Your are aching yeah, so it's, much. I suppose, really, although, uh, and this is the question people ask, is that although there's a lot of padding on the obstacles, that's that's one thing, but it's just your body's getting thrown around all over the place. So mm-hmm. there is, it's just a little bit of sore yeah, stuff, isn't everything. it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember it. Yeah, that's right. So... 
Oh, but they were a great bunch, and we kept up for a while as well. Yeah. You know, such fun together going well, out. I have found this with quite a few. Is that it's amazing, you know, how quite a few people, given how long ago it is, how there's there are a handful of people that from meeting, you know, out there are still in touch to this day. You know, yeah. so it, it says a lot. I mean, I suppose it's a shared experience, really, isn't it? You know, yeah, that's shared, right. Really, uh, unique, and I, I guess at the time, I mean, you didn't realize how big the show was going to be, or that it would still be popular you know yeah. to this day i know i know people love it don't they it's, yeah. well, <laughs> it's such fun well i don't know if you've heard but america have actually rebooted uh the series they filmed a brand new series late last year which i think is on tv over here at the moment and they're getting ready to film a second series in america which has got me wondering if they are potentially going to reboot it over here i mean they can't oh, wow. film it well, they wouldn't be able to film it in Argentina. I think flying people across the world is not going to be a, a thing. No, 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 uh, no. Uh, right. Plus, as well, uh, I don't know if you heard, but the, the Wipeout set, uh, once they stopped filming in 2012, that's now a housing estate. So none oh. of that, yeah, none of that exists anymore. It, it all got demolished and uh, there's, there's people living there now. So, oh, wow, gosh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I do wonder if in the foundations, there's probably a lot of... Uh, uh, used uh, trainers that got swallowed up in the mud pits because I know a lot of people lost their shoes there. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. There's probably a few hundred pairs of trainers beneath these people's houses out there. So. Oh, oh, God. Oh, that is funny, yeah. <laughs> but um, oh. obviously, that was that. I mean, the other big show, and again, uh, with Fort Boyard, the thing that stood out to me, in fact, if we just start oh, running this... Okay. Hold on, I'm going to have to mute this a second so you can talk me through it. Because Fort Boyard, was that around maybe 2003, 2004 time that you did it? It would have oh been. Oh, gosh, John. I know I'm putting you on the spot um, again. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I mean, how did you apply for it out of interest? Did you personally apply or did you get like. No, actually. Um, my children used to watch it. Right. And they would watch it in the evening when I was working. Yeah. And um, but my my business was from home, and anyhow, they were. They, I think they put it up on the TV that they were looking for people to apply. Yeah. So they then um, decided to put me through. Right. And um, for to, yeah to, to to enter it, and um, they came back saying they'd like me to be on the show, and right. if I had some friends or team members, and so then I contacted the other people in my team right. and said, would you do this? And we went for an audition and we all got in. Right. So, so, like right the, so the other guys that were in it, because I noticed Roscoe Nash was one of them. Was this yeah. all, all the ones you knew from uh, UltraFit, all the cross-training? Yes, that's right. And yeah. Sarah and I were good friends, and yeah. my husband, Glenn, and then right. they had um a chap that they um trained as well yeah so um we were going to have somebody else but anyhow so they chose their friend who they train yeah. and um he was a top triathlete but yeah basically it was all people we knew but honestly i had not seen the show right before. so you had no chance to do any and, research yeah and, and my idea you, that you, do it, Mom, you must do it you know yeah so i said oh, okay we'll do it you know and see see how i get on so I've got to ask, this tightrope walk, we, yeah. were you asked to do it because of your gymnastics backgrounds? Or... No. No, no, John. Yeah. We didn't know what we were given, right? right. They decided that we were making the show. Oh, and right. the one thing I was very worried about was if in case they asked me to do a bungee jump. Right. Because I was happier doing the tightrope walk than I would have been doing a bungee jump. Right, yeah. Um, no, I haven't done either. Well. No, <laughs> yeah. they, they decided on what we should do, but right, I see. Yeah, gymnastic background. I think they chose those things. Yeah, and they thought that I would. Yeah, but as I, there was Sarah lent me her racing flats because right. I had these thick, thick trainers on that I knew were going to be too difficult. So of I asked. Course, yeah, her, because I suppose do you need a little bit of give in the trainer so you can actually feel the road. Yeah, you need Otherwise, something. That's right. Funny. And yeah. they were a little bit big for me, but I felt I could feel right. you know, my footing better in those yeah. than I would have done in the, the clumpier trainers that I brought with me. Right. So, well, yeah. The balance on this must have been insane. The amount of, like, stability and stuff that you do, I mean, it must have been, I mean, your heart rate must have been pushing up a fair bit on oh, this. Gosh, yes, I know. And yeah. there was a few beeps as well, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all, all edited out, obviously, yeah. 
because they're all below me going, come on, come on. I yeah. Yeah, like this to them. <laughs> I suppose this is the side of TV shows that people don't realise that yeah, so much of it yeah. has to be edited out because yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I remember being told the classic sort of thing. This one guy said, he said, let's face it, if you do so, if you drop something on your foot, the first words that come out of your mouth is not going to be, oh dear. <laughs> it's usually no, no, that's and right. I think it's just for situations. It's like an involuntary reaction almost. Yeah, that's right. But again, I just did it in the nick of time. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> you can see that was only 20 seconds on the clock there. That was, that was kind yeah. of close. Were, you, were they keeping you informed of how much time was remaining as you were doing that tightrope walk? Uh, I, you know, I can't remember, John. I'm well, sorry, I can't I remember. Suppose, I was so... Let's face it, you had other things to worry about up there, didn't you? Like trying to keep Yeah, 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 that's right. The tigers, the tigers down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't want to turn into lunch, did you? <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, after that, I was so drained and exhausted. Surprised. Yeah. I had to go back to my hotel room and I didn't stop sleeping. They had to come and wake me up. I was yeah. exhausted. Yeah. Because it was just so scary. And um, I desperately wanted to complete the task, you see. Yeah. And um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> so am I right? The, the thought we are, it is, it's filmed out in France, isn't it? Is that, yeah. is that correct? Yeah. So that's um, uh, the set there. Is that, did you say that was an old prison or something? I yes. That's right. Apparently it was, yeah, that's right. I right. forgot the name now, but yeah, it was out in the sea and you had to be brought along on a little boat. Yeah. Climb up. But right. it was like a, a huge, big, like tanker type thing place and it was a prison, yeah. Right. So yeah. Um, am I right? So when you said you stayed at a, a hotel, I'm assuming the hotel, you didn't stay at that place. The hotel was more no. on land and then yeah. you just get shipped out to, to the place. Yeah. Now, was it just one day that you were there? Did you film the whole episode in a single day or was it split over a couple of days? The whole day was the show, but right. we had, we were out there for, I think about four or five days or something. Right, yeah. Well, a long time ago but they yeah. looked after us really well yeah and, uh, that's um, the one thing you've got to give credit for for these shows because obviously um obviously they pay for your all your expenses to to oh, get yeah. out there they provide your food all that sort of stuff because oh, yeah. it's great you know, the, yeah. these are all questions that people always wonder about you know do you have to what i'm sure if, you, if you're short of money do you go hungry whatever but no no they, no, no, they really do look after you very well yeah. and they're all very very nice helpful people yeah. So you can get addicted actually to want to be doing these shows because it's great fun. Yeah, well, I know, yeah. I know some. There's one guy I know, and he's been on. Oh, I've lost count of how many shows he's been on. He's done quite a few, but um, yeah, I mean, they do look an awful lot of fun. But it's it's kind of funny that what's when you're there seeing things being filmed and what you see on TV can look quite different at times, can't it? Yeah, there's things in the background that they you don't see. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I always remember. I always remember one of the producers on Wipeout saying that they said it all happens in the edit. You know that is, you know, as long as they got all the footage, then they can stitch it together as they want, and that's how they, you know, that's how they make the shows. That's so, right. Um, yeah. So, oh. um, just very quickly, um, I haven't got any clips of it. You were on Dragons Den as well. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a, a thing in terms of time frames. You know those pictures that we. Uh, so you know when people pitch their business idea to the to the dragons what we see on tv is normally like a, a five minute uh four or five minute pitch is that real time or is it a much longer uh a much longer oh, much much longer charm right. oh goodness me yeah much longer yeah. i mean obviously some people are on there for longer than others yeah you know they find some of it a bit more interesting and they'll keep you there for longer but yeah. i think i was with them for about 40 minutes oh my goodness but yeah so quite a long time you know it just backs up the whole thing that what people see on tv and what actually happens for the filming are two completely different things yeah yeah and, that's um, right. yeah so it's, all right, it's just a quick one on that and obviously well, let's, let's go to this then ninja warriors yeah. one and this is 2015 so i'll leave this uh, leave the sound down on this of course, obviously, you, me, and your son, Connell, we all auditioned together for this one, didn't we? We did, yeah. Yeah. I think... of, course, the, of course, obviously, I mean, I was up, I remember coming up to, to watch you and uh, Connell on this. Do you want to set the scene on this? Because ultimately, I mean, going out on the third, obviously, you know, the, the third quintuple steps wasn't part of the plan. But what was what was the incentive for, for going in for Ninja Warrior? So, um my son had come back to live with me after being at university and, right. and I just thought that, you know, he'd become so strong and fit and everything. And uh, yeah. I thought him and I could enter this show. I really wanted him because I thought he'd be really good at it. Yeah. But I thought I really wanted him to do well and 
we got training for it. Yeah. But really, it was for him I was yeah. doing. It. I, 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 but I knew we could get on to the show yeah. as a pair. Right. And um, there's an awful lot of fit, strong um, young men. Yeah. But having the mum and son uh, It was together, quite an interesting angle, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a good... And I thought they... At that time, there may be now, but at that time, there was nobody else yeah. like him and I together. Yeah. So I knew we could probably get onto the show. Yeah. Um, but I knew I wouldn't actually feature on the course very well. Um, right. I wasn't as fit and strong. There was a lot of very strong and fit girls coming through now. They were doing all sorts of the CrossFit. Yeah. And um, so really, it was about him. Yeah. And I what, yeah, so what happened was um, he went, we were near the start of, yeah. of it and um, it was still a bit wet and um, he went on before me and he slipped. And yeah. um, so I was so upset for him. And then, of course, when I had to go after him, my heart wasn't in it. Oh, yeah, um, of course, yeah. So I wasn't really trying hard enough, but I know I probably wouldn't have got very far anyhow. <laughs> I, I suppose it doesn't this doesn't this back up with sports in general that mentally being in the right mindset plays a huge part oh. into how well you're you're going to do. And oh, if, yeah. if I was so upset for him. Yeah, yeah. Cause I remember watching it as soon as uh, Connell did his run. Immediately, you were put up straight after it, and I was thinking like, she's literally oh, yeah. she's just she just watched Connell sort of. You know, it was honestly it was just he was so close to clearing it. It was just a simple. Just I know. I couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. I was in shock that he yeah. fell in so early on. I just thought, I my goodness, this is ridiculous. Is, though, He's even, in. even finalists have, have made, you know, uh, have made a yeah. mistake at the opening obstacle. It can catch anyone out, but it's just one of those things. It can just happen <laughs> on the day. So you've got all that to deal with. And then you've been told, oh, by the way, you're up next now. And like, I know. Yeah, and I was like feeling sorry for him. What I would I say? Yeah. And then, of course, how would it be if his mother got further than him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, I knew I wouldn't do very well anyhow, John, you know, because I wasn't. And I also was suffering a little bit with a golfer's elbow because we had to do all this sort of climbing. Oh, good. Right. Yeah. Type thing. And so, yeah, I mean, it was really mainly about him. And um, yeah, it was fun anyhow. Still a, a nice day out, you know. I just noticed as well, we've got this image here of the quintuple steps. At the bottom, you know, at the actual bottom of the quintuple steps, that looks like about a six foot, five to six foot gap. That's quite a lot. So yeah. you're, so given that, like, because how tall are you? Are you about uh, five, two? Just under five? Five, I'm just under five foot, John. Oh, really? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Right. So you yeah. compare someone who's six foot versus someone new. You've got to jump an awful lot further relative to your, your body height. So that <laughs> makes this obstacle an awful lot more difficult, isn't it? It wasn't going to happen, was it, John? I wasn't going to be able to do it. I know. I know. Because I but remember anyway. after you'd done your run, I managed to have a quick one behind, and I stared at the, at the start of the course, and I'm thinking, like, those things are a lot wider apart than what you realised. Yeah. It's I know. Um, yeah, it's just shows you how fun. good the people are that do do yeah. it. I know. So oh, interest, because obviously this was filmed in Manchester. Did you stay out? Because I think they had a hotel nearby for the contestants. Did yeah. you stay overnight in the hotel? Or yeah, they, they put us up in the hotel and everything oh, like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, I know. It was a good experience oh, again. Absolutely. Yeah. So my son says to me, oh, "I'm so embarrassed." He says to me, he "Doesn't yeah. you know want to know about it now?" <laughs> well, do you know the thing is, and the you're going to have your usual armchair critics at home saying like, oh, that was rubbish. I could do so much better. Yeah, you say that. But a lot of the people who say that, A, they generally won't have the bottle to go and audition. Yeah, that's and then, right. Even if you get picked, I've heard of people that have been picked for shows. And then I, I heard apparently, I think this happened in the first series of Wipeout. Someone was picked to go on the show. And then when they were at the airport, changed their mind and they didn't want to get on the plane. Yeah, so I know. You know, there's a lot of things like this, and also it's, it's all about performing on command. You know, when the yes. buzzer goes, whether you're ready or not, you just have to do whatever you can. You know, it and, is that's and, right. It yeah. is, takes an awful lot to just get up there with all the cameras going and everyone watching you. Yeah, it's a totally different. Oh, to yeah, doing it, just say on your own, but when you've got all the focus on mm. you, it's very scary. So well, you're right, the, right, the right, the right thing on that occasion. Yeah, because I mean, the only relation I've got is I mean, I've done quite a few like rowing events, stuff like that. It's nervous, but you kind of get used to it. But I just remember with Wipeout, 
when you stood at the top of the course ready to start, you know, a show like this, it is terrifying. I've never been so nervous in all my life because it's just completely outside of what you're yeah. used to dealing with. And it's just a... And it's really quiet, John. Do you remember on Total Wipeout as well? It's so quiet. You're on your own. It's almost like you stood at the top of the hill and you could yeah. hear a pin drop. You just see a handful of production people all That's just right. staring at you. And it's sort yeah. of like, what do I do? Actually, I there's a point. What was your, can you remember what your shout out was? Because they never heard it. Because um, some of them do, some, some they don't, yeah. Yeah, do, what do you mean, at the top of the slope? Before uh, you yeah, at the top of the slope. Yeah, before you start the course, they say, do, do your shout out and then, uh, yeah. then, they'll, uh, then they'll begin. I think I said I was something like jumping jacks or something like that. Right. You know, I think yeah. the shout out, something like that. Oh, I got you. Because I know with, um, uh, I know with some of these ones that uh, people will do a shout out and they'll only show a part of it. But then in some cases, they don't even show it whatsoever. So, again, these yeah. are these are sort of questions that frequently get asked by people. You know, they, they just want to know little bits of extra info behind the scenes of, you know, yeah. what's happened. Uh, out of interest, whatever you with what your shout out was, did you get it right on the first attempt? Or did you, because I fluffed my lines a few times. I, I took about four attempts. Well, you've got such a good memory, John. Um, I think I was okay with it, but of course they didn't use the name, did they? They gave me press up jacks, which I didn't know. know. <laughs> Came onto the TV. Yeah, so I was true. joking, no, Jack. That's the other thing. All these nicknames, we have no idea what we're going to be called. Cool, that's it. And those biceps, I mean, they were all new to me. <laughs> they did the same to me as well. <laughs> It's, I'm surprised, you know, when they did it with me, I'm surprised they didn't have some needles hanging out of it because it looked like I was, I was juicing at the time, which, disclaimer, I wasn't, okay? I've never done that. <laughs> I know, yeah, it's so funny, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, good times, yeah. real good times. So, obviously, the big question is, I mean, obviously, we've we've taken quite a bit longer on this than, than planned. So, uh, to anyone still watching, congratulations, uh, hats off to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously this is all stuff you've done in the last 20 years or certainly on the tv side and obviously your sporting history goes back you know even longer yeah. um what are you doing with training now right so john i changed direction a little bit and yeah. um, so i qualified as a yoga teacher right and um for the last two years i was doing a lot of yoga mm. and um my running sort of slipped back and i ended up with a foot malfunction right. so my running hasn't been great so yeah. My son um, decided that we'd work a little bit on doing some body weight things and right. got ourselves some rings during yeah. lockdown. Okay. And I've always wanted to learn to do a, um, even though I was a gymnast, yeah. I never got to do the actual muscle up like the men do, not on the rings. Oh, that's the one where you literally, you sort of pull the bar up and then basically pull it down to almost waist. That's, yeah. that's right, John. No, I've yes. never done that. So, yeah, so um, the thing is, is kipping is different. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You see them swinging. And, I've seen that, yeah. yeah. So he wants me to do it the strict way. And during lockdown, we got our rings and we put them in the garage yeah. amongst all the, you know, rubbish right. in there. And we were practicing. And so now I've got them out in the garden. He's in America. And so right. he's now training me with drills. Right. And um, I'm not there yet, yeah. but I'm hoping that I will manage it in the next month or so because right. I, will, I think they say I'll be the oldest woman to have been taught how to do a muscle up. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, how these. old are you at the moment? Out of interest. Oh, I don't want to say. <laughs> okay, a woman will never disclose her age. <laughs> getting old, John. Getting right, okay, old. Well, is it about th thirty-seven now? I think it's uh, thirty-seven. <laughs> or third, yeah. So hopefully. Um, I'll manage it. We're mm. nearly there and I'm working on that and yeah. uh, trying to get back into running again because that's my love. I love the yeah. running. But the, the muscle up shouldn't just, just I kept getting this injury on the yeah. elbow. Is it like and, a sort of a, a tendon? Is it like a tendon type thing that keeps flaring up? Yeah, it just sort of flares up a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, uh, it's all right. I had a tendon injury three years ago and it took ages to hit. It just kept coming and going. Like even simple yeah. things like holding tennis. a drink bottle would strain it. I couldn't yeah, believe it. That's, yeah. That's right, John. Yeah. yeah. But the false grip thing and oh. I've made sure that I've not got any problems with my shoulders. Yeah. But everyone says, oh, you know what? If you can do pull-ups and you can do dips, you can do a muscle-up. Yeah. No, not a chance. Yeah. This is... <laughs> yeah. 
a lot of core strength and trying to yeah. push through and everything. So hopefully, John, that's at the moment that's my goal. Yeah. And just staying healthy and enjoying the training. Of course, yeah. I suppose the big question is uh, when you get it done. I'm assuming you're going to be posting it on your Instagram yeah. and uh, will you put it on YouTube as well? You have will, to. John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I don't blame you. In fact, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to go. Let's see if I can work this technology uh, stuff again. I'm going to put your socials up on here so people can see, right? Oh, so it, oh, thank it, you. It'll be up and running in a second. So this is what people want to look out for if they want to follow you. Is uh, is it Jim Jacks is your handle on yeah, Instagram? That's it. Yeah, right. it is, John. So that's the sort of profile you want to look for. I see you got a couple of your story highlights there as well. And also YouTube channel as well. So look for someone with just over 700 sub subri uh, subscribers. Can't even get my words out. And uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously it's just, just your own name. So just type Jackie, Jackie McQuiston in and people can find there. Because from what I've seen, you've got quite a few workout videos and a lot of suggestions. Isn't there one video that's a suggestions on how to do the splits and everything? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, just that's... look at look at your profile picture there. That's you doing the splits there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, doing the splits is not... at the moment. I, I mean, I can still do the splits. Yeah. yeah so I'm quite flexible, John. Yeah. yeah. Kept that, that is kept something that, that I've never been able to do myself because, uh, well, the two times I've inadvertently done the splits, I've accidentally torn my hamstring oh, I, as well. I remember when we did the It's a Knockout thing. That's it. Country. Yeah. I tore it on yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, just to clarify what people uh, know, the year after Jackson and myself did Wipeout, they rounded up a few total wipeout contestants to do it's a knockout for, for charity. And one of the events was, it was like a cargo net going up to a big inflatable slide. And as I'm running up the net, my foot gets, I slip and my foot stays up there and I effectively do the split straight away. And it was, yeah. I felt a tear and it I was, remember. that hurt. Yeah, that's nice. Gosh, took five, yeah. yeah, it took five months to heal that one. So, uh, yeah, that wasn't I know. Oh. So yeah, I've got to be honest. So, so for you, muscle ups is on your bucket list. For me, it's doing the splits. I still want to be able to work <laughs> on it. So actually, if Connell's teaching you to do muscle ups, maybe you can teach me to do the splits. Yes. That would be good. Yeah. Then we can both <laughs> tick off our own relative bucket list. That's it. Yeah. Oh. Well, I hope to get it done anyway. I want. He's desperately trying hard to get yeah. me to do it before my birthday, which is in a few weeks' time. So right, yeah. not going to manage that, John. So, so that's <laughs> that's when you turn thirty-seven, isn't it, or thirty-eight? I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but there could be someone in China, some woman in China. You know, right. they're amazing out there, aren't they? Oh, I know. know. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, who knows? It might be somebody older than me that can do it, but it's been from, you know, being taught from the beginning how to do yeah. it. And also, again, if you do it, it's putting you in a very rarefied category. And it's kind of nice to aim for sort of things, to do things that most people aren't capable of doing. It's kind of that there's the extra motivation there, isn't there? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, Jax, thanks ever so much for this. I know the original plan was to keep this to 30 minutes. I think we've gone slightly over that, but apparently it's quite a, it doesn't matter. It's been great chatting. But look, Thank Jax, thanks so ever so much. And uh, when Thank I post you. this on YouTube and Instagram, I'll put links to your profiles in there if people want to follow you. Thank you, you very much, And then John. we'll be keeping an eye on how you get on with the muscle-ups. So uh, <laughs> looking forward to seeing that one. Oh, OK. Thank you very much, right, John. Yeah, thanks ever so much. All right, take you. care. All right, cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>